Does anyone else ever think about the fact that when Sony was making the first Spider-Man movie in the early 2000s, somebody looked at that movie and said, yeah, this is great, but you know what it really needs? Nickelback. And they say that a hero can save us, I'm not gonna stay. Movie tie-in music videos are becoming somewhat of a rarity now, but back in the day, these things were everywhere. I mean, if your Killer Shark movie didn't come with a rap music video with LL Cool J rapping about how his hat is like a shark fin and then anamorphing into a shark, then baby, I'm sorry to say, but you would get laughed away from the box office. Seriously though, movie tie-in music videos have always interested me. It's the perfect intersection of two mediums that I love, music and film. There's a whole bunch of these music videos, ranging from the lazy ones that just intercut clips from the movie with a band or artist playing the song, to videos that take elements and themes from the film and create an original complementary piece of media to be viewed alongside the film. The latter of those two is what I'm going to be focusing on today because usually those are the only ones worth talking about. Now I've tried to pick a few of my favourites that involve a wide range of artists, musical genres, movie genres and time periods, just so we can get a complete picture of how rampant and widespread these videos have been over the years. Alright, to start I want to talk about Hero by Chad Crow. Originally, I was going to talk about the video for All the Stars by Kendrick Lamar and SZA that was featured in the first Black Panther back in 2018, but instead I decided to talk about the music video for Lift Me Up by Rihanna that featured in Black Panther Wakanda Forever last year. Because while I think that All the Stars is a better song and has a more conceptually interesting music video, I mean, come on, it's... Kendrick, it's not even fair. That song is about five years old, and I wanted a super recent example to really contrast the other videos on this list. I'm not saying that to take away from Rihanna's song, that's just my personal taste, because in fact, Lift Me Up is a brilliant heartfelt song that still gives you the chills when the credits roll on Wakanda Forever. I mean, seriously, when this started playing in the cinema, there wasn't a dry eye in the house. As for the music video, it's not bad. Look, I'm not super impressed with the video itself considering it's just Rihanna singing on a beach at sunset with clips from the movie cut in. Usually I would call this one lazy, but the emotion in this video really elevates what's on the screen. The themes of grief and acceptance present in the film come through effortlessly in this video and the song itself is damn good. The scenes on the beach are well composed and the burning fire is a beautiful link to the film. And even though I usually find ripping clips from the movie lazy, I think the excerpts played in this video are very well chosen and play well within the video. It's pretty simple really. If you even had the faintest attachment to Chadwick Boseman, then this video will move you and video production aside, I think that's where the real strength of this video lies. This video shows that movie tie-in music videos, while rarer now, are still very much alive and well. Now let's pull a complete 180 and go to the corny shit. I can't find a rhyme on my Creed, one of the most laughed at bands of the 2000s, mostly due to one lead singer named Scott Stapp. Gee, I wonder why. You have all the groupies, all the groupies you want, huh? Hundred of play. Don't you just like do whatever you want? Do you have like five of them after the show? What do you yeah. Do you? Yeah, yeah, I have like five of them. Now. Do you have a guy like going in the audience picking them out like this? Yeah, like yeah, yeah, yeah. I have like five of them in the audience. I'm done. Uh, uh, oh, 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 no, no, ugh. Look, I've never hated Creed. I don't love the band, but they have some bangers if you just laugh off Scott Stapp's Eddie Vedder impression. It's too far down, too far down. Please come now, think I'm falling, holding on the wall. Look, drunk, sleazy rock star shenanigans aside, 
Creed managed to pull off a really cool music video for their song, What If, that featured in Scream 3. I have a soft spot for early 2000s rock and I love the Scream movies, so this video is right up my alley. The video follows the band and their, air quotes, girlfriends, as they mess around in a movie set back lot when suddenly they are chased by Ghostface. The band is seemingly murdered until at the end it is revealed that the whole time Ghostface was just Creed running around in Ghostface mask in a ploy to freak out their lady friends. Oh, oh shit, oh no, it's Ghostface, oh, quick, run. Ah, it's Scott Stamp, fucking run! This video was also made so much cooler by the fact that they have David Arquette in character as Dewey, working as a security guard at the studio. This video is put together as if it were the opening scene to an actual Scream movie, with Ghostface on the phone at the start. Scary night, isn't it? Looks like right out of a horror it's movie or something. And the video even ends with a surprise appearance from a real ghost face. The video is also accompanied by sequences of the band playing the song in a warehouse with lighting, choreography, and wind effects that are so dramatic, it's funny. There's also some pretty solid effects here too, with a window smash stunt at the start of the video and a massive explosion at the end. Look man, I don't know what to tell you. I love this video. It's a 2000s rock video meets Scream movie opening scene. It's the best B-movie horror flick I've ever seen. The appearance by David Arquette is awesome, there's a Hollywood level of production behind it, and the song is pretty kick-ass. This is a prime example of a music video taking elements from the movie it's featuring and making something new and fun. It's great. Now let's wind it back a few years to something a bit more funky. Unlike the last two videos, I am convinced that most, if not all of you, have heard this song and seen this video. Man, this song slaps. Wait, wait, no, Will, Will, that's, no, that's not what I meant, Will, no, Will, Will, no! Many would say that Will Smith slap jokes are lazy and played out to this point. But to that, I say I have no self-respect or morals, so I will happily continue to flog this dead horse until someone breaks my arms. This is the epitome of what a movie tie-in music video should be. A video for a song that was purpose-made for the movie with a music video that looks like it was shot on the actual film set. Seeing and hearing Will Smith rap in this video is so strange to me considering that, you know, he just doesn't do it anymore. Back in the day though, this was his whole shtick. He was the movie star who could also make a song to go with your movie. For a music video that was made in 1997, this video still holds up tremendously well. The set design is excellent, Will Smith's infectious charisma sells the video, the choreography is well done, and the CGI hasn't aged too badly. I also just think it's funny that Will Smith made a whole song describing exactly what it is that this top secret government service does and explains it in great detail. This whole video feels like Agent J hijacked a MIB base just so he could launch a rap career alongside his government job. The video depicts Will Smith in character as Agent J as he cruises through an MIB headquarters, complete with the black suits and Ray-Bans you expect. We also get to see Will stop an alien invasion through a dance number. We get the alien eyes, goop, and actual aliens. What more could you ask for? Yo, Will was hitting that? My man, you have some serious explaining to do. Hey, no, hey, what's that? No, don't try to Sorry. avoid the question. Uh, uh, what was I talking about again? Mm. Oh, of course, Metallica. There was a time before the new Mission Impossible movies where instead of being tense action espionage films with a focus on practical filmmaking and stunts, Mission Impossible movies had an identity crisis where they had no idea what they wanted to be. 
The first movie is a tense spy thriller with basically no action and is all about deception and spy shit. The second movie basically went on to say, fuck that shit, let's get some John Woo doves and spinny gun action in this one. Resulting in Mission Impossible 2 being a movie that is unbearable for most of its runtime until you hit the final 20 minutes or so of action gold. To accompany this, of course, they needed an equally bombastic soundtrack, and who better for the job than Metallica? That's how we got the absolute gold that is the music video for Metallica's song, I Disappear, from Mission Impossible 2. I'm a massive Metallica fan, so I could probably talk about this video forever, but for the sake of brevity, I'll try and keep it brief. I Disappear has always been a really interesting song to me because sonically it sounds nothing like the album that Metallica put out before for the single, and nothing like the album they put out afterwards, and it's always maintained as a great one and done single for the band. Many fans, including myself, wish that the band moved forward with a sound like this for their next album. Instead, we got Saint Anger. Yay. <laughs> This is also the last song that the band recorded with their, at the time, longest serving bass player Jason Newstead before he left the band in 2001. He fucking left the band! He fucking left the band! Which part of that is... Hello? Put simply, Metallica had no fucking clue what they were doing in the early 2000s, and the band almost imploded in the process. Quite frankly, I'm amazed that this song is as good as it is, but the video is even better. The video is basically a mini Mission Impossible movie starring Metallica. The video plays around with the opening scene of the movie where Tom Cruise is rock climbing in a desert. Except here, he's doing it so he can see the Metallica concert at the top of the rocky cliff. Tom Cruise is a very dedicated Metallica fan. The video also features each member of the band facing their own Mission Impossible set piece. Kirk Hammett is trying to avoid being run down by a biplane. James Hetfield is driving a muscle car to outrun a shockwave. Lars Ulrich is trying to escape from an exploding building. And Jason Newstead is trying to not get trampled. I don't know, he just gets pushed around for a while by a bunch of guys in suits. Look, if you know anything about Metallica, you know that Jason always drew the short straw. Regardless, each scenario is exciting and it's all put together like a fully fledged feature and there is an impressive amount of practical stunt work in each one. I mean, even Lars had the balls to do this stunt himself. Oh fuck, oh man, oh shit, oh god, Dave Mustaine's trying to kill me again. I'm sorry, I'll pay your royalties, Dave, shit, Dave! The music paired with the video creates what is, in my opinion, one of the most kick-ass music videos of all time. The song is great, the video scale is massive and pulled off extremely well, and it all ties back into the movie perfectly. There's some great sweeping shots of the band performing on top of a rock face, and yes, they did all of this for real. I want to put you on the mushroom right there. How do I get on that? The helicopter will just come up and, and hover and you step off. Right! What? Step off the helicopter, <laughs> it doesn't land. And where are you going to be? I'll be in the helicopter. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so okay, it's really, the back. theory is fabulous, you know. <laughs> I'm going to leave you up there, dude. I think. I'll climb okay. and from where the helicopter lands. I'll climb from somewhere with a rig to get there for the shot. But I'm not stepping off the car in the wind. all at that, and I don't think I can do that. James was the one actually driving the car, Kirk was actually running away from a plane, Lars was running away from those explosions, and Jason got his shit rocked by a bunch of guys in suits. The band did most of this stuff themselves, and it all makes for an excellent video. This is a prime example of what happens when you have a great song with a great video that creates something inspired from the film instead of pasting movie clips over a jam session. Although I've always found it funny that at the end of the video, Tom Cruise finally gets to the top of the cliff and the band is nowhere to be seen. <laughs> like, my man climbed a cliff to get to the Metallica concert and missed it. I feel for him. This is a music video done on a Hollywood level budget and it shows. This is one of my all time favorites and it's not hard to see why. 
A good song is always a good song, but a great video to go with it can make it so much better. Now let's get back to the weird shit. What do you get when you ask Prince to make a soundtrack for a Batman movie? Absolute fucking gold. Batman 89 is a masterpiece, and most of that is due to the fact that Tim Burton just refused to think inside the box for the whole production. Giving Prince the responsibility of crafting a soundtrack to accompany the film is perhaps one of the best examples of unconventional thinking that this movie thrives on. Prince didn't just make one or two songs for this film. He made the whole album. The soundtrack for Batman 89 is literally just a Prince album. One of the standout tracks on the album is a track called Bat Dance, a strange electronic pop rock song that samples dialogue from the film. It's an unconventional piece of music and one that I actually quite like. You wouldn't think it would work under a Batman aesthetic, but it's a piece of music that fits in quite well with Burton's interpretation of Batman. Although for me, the song is much, much better when paired with the music video. The video revolves around a dance number performed in a gothic cave setting by a whole crew of Jokers and Bat people led by Prince himself, dressed up as a Batman-Joker hybrid. As this happens, we also see Prince performing this song in what I can only describe as the Prince Cave. The video switches gears in the latter half, with a Vicky Vale mob entering the scene, instantly giving the video a much more sexual energy. I mean, come on, it's Prince, if anyone was going to try and make Batman sexy, it was going to be him. In case I wasn't obvious enough, I present this. Yeah, oh yeah, I wanna bust that body. Just when I think I've seen it all, Prince comes along in a half Batman, half Joker outfit and says he wants to get on with Vicky Vale. All in all, I really love this video. I'm a huge Batman fan, so it's interesting to see such a wildly different use of the character's aesthetic in a musical medium. The energy and choreography here is on point, the production is brilliant, and it's unlike anything else I've seen before. This video is so fun and outrageous that it never really feels as silly as you would expect it to. It's kind of like a, it's so ridiculous that it works sort of deal. Anyway, Prince's take on the Dark Knight. I like it. Honestly, I wish there was more. There was no way I was going to go through this whole video without mentioning one of the Linkin Park Transformers songs. All in all, the band gave three songs to the franchise. What I've Done for the 2007 film, New Divide for Revenge of the Fallen, and the song I want to talk about, Iridescent, for Dark of the Moon. Although before I continue, a special shout out for this moment. I know that Iridescent is the least popular of the three songs, but I think it has the best music video out of all of them. The music videos for What I've Done and New Divide don't really pay much attention to the Transformers universe, whereas Iridescent fully embraces the setting with its music video. The song is a very reflective and somber composition, meditating on the past and damage done. To reflect this, the video makes a strong use of black and white with a mix of religious dystopian landscapes and Transformers imagery filling the scene. A lot of the bots even make brief appearances in the video, even if it's all done with reused CGI assets from Dark of the Moon. We see the band occupying haunting settings among the Transformers that we know and love, mixing with imagery that signals the end of days and even Cybertronian set pieces and beings. It is very much a trans Transformers music video, but it brings enough unique elements to the franchise that it stands as its own individual piece of art. I've always thought that out of all the songs to feature in the first trilogy of Transformers films, this one was used most effectively in the final film. The montage of death and destruction that this song accompanies in Dark of the Moon is one of the very few genuinely impactful and moving moments that we are treated to in Michael Bay's Transformers movies, and a 
big part of that is owed to this song. Beyond all that, I just think that this is one of the more visually interesting music videos I've seen done for a movie. Linkin Park is a brilliant band. They never disappoint. Most importantly though, I think this video nails the idea of the best music videos being the ones that strike a perfect balance between their own original ideas and taking inspiration from the film. It's a beautiful music video for a beautiful song and at the end of the day, that's all we can ask for. Well, that was a journey and a half. This has always been a really interesting topic to me, so I hope that you guys enjoyed it as well. I am well aware that there are a million more of these things that I did not cover. So if I missed one of your favorites, let me know in the comments. And if I make another one of these, I'll try my best to cover it. Anyways, thanks a lot, guys. I'll catch you in the next one. See ya. My power, my pleasure, my pain.